In a previous story, I was telling about the interesting experience of Dig for a Day, where you actually work with archaeologists in the land of Israel. You learn a little bit about how they work and, and you learn how to schlep, how to carry the uh, soil with whatever is in it, um, to dig it out gently and then take it and how to sift it, how to wash the pottery and so on. And you actually work on a dig site for a few days or for a few hours, depending on how much time you have. And we had a team that went out to the town of Gilo. Gilo is about three or four miles south of Jerusalem, but just a little bit west of Bethlehem. And Gilo is the hometown of Ahithophel. Ahithophel was David's wise counselor. And you remember how when his son Absalom broke away from him and stole the hearts of the men of Judah, that Ahithophel went over with Absalom. And you might wonder why, but as we read the scripture, we discover that Ahithophel was the grandfather of Bathsheba. And so he had just cause to be upset. And he went with Absalom, and his advice was, listen, you get a small hit squad together, you immediately go after David, kill him, and that's all. It'll be over before it begins, and the people will align with you because David will be dead. And the saying pleased Absalom well. But Hushai, who had come over to David, David had said, no, you go with Absalom and maybe you can neutralize the council of Ahithophel. And that's exactly what happened. Hushai played on this uh, rebellious son's pride and said, no, 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 no. What you need to do is get the whole army together. Like, you're king for a day, man. You need to be out in front of the whole army. Don't be fooled. David is a great warrior and you're going to need a big army. And so time was lost, and as you know, they ended up being destroyed in battle. Well, when Ahithophel heard this, he got on his donkey, he rode back to Gilo, set his house in order, and hanged himself. It was over. Well, we were working there at Gilo, and uh, actually at a Roman villa. A Roman officer had built this beautiful villa. We were working on some of the mosaics and the floors and so on. It was quite a beautiful spot. And at the end of the time, once again, we thanked these archaeologists for letting us Gentiles come to their land and dig around in their land and discover things with them. And we wanted to do something for them. And so once again, we gathered the group together and we sang to them the 23rd Psalm. And as we came to the end of the psalm, it was time to get on the bus, but there was a young lady, an archaeologist, who was working over under a tree in the shade, washing pottery, and I thought she said amen at the end of our hymn. And so I went over to her and I said, look, we just have a minute here, we're getting on the bus, but um, did I hear you say amen at the end of our hymn? And she said, yes, you did. And I said, well, now, I know that's your scripture. That's the Hebrew Bible. But I'm wondering if I could ask you another question. I don't mean to be offensive, but, but who is Yeshua to you? And she gave this beautiful smile, and she said, he is my Savior. Her name was Yona ben Levi. Now, Yona is the feminine form of Jonah, and it means a dove. And she told how she was from a wealthy Jewish family there in the city of Jerusalem. And when she graduated from the Hebrew University, her parents gave her a round-the-world ticket as a graduation present. And she was traveling around the world and came to Hawaii where she had an aunt. And she went to see this aunt, and the aunt said, Am I so glad to see you? There are these two Jesus freaks that are trying to convince me that Isaiah 53 is about Jesus. And uh, you've studied the Bible at university, so you can prove them wrong. She said, I never read Isaiah 53. 
And so she said, my aunt and I started to study Isaiah 53. And when we finished reading it, we looked at each other and said, we think that's Jesus too. And in a glorious victory for the gospel, these two young fellows who had stuck Isaiah 53 under the nose of this old Jewish lady discovered that not only she but her niece also put her trust in the Lord. And she said, you know, God's doing a great work here in Israel among the Jews. She went to a Bible study with over 250 Jews at the YMCA in West Jerusalem. And she said, many Jews are turning to the Lord. In fact, there is a Jewish rabbi whose business it is to try and stop Jews from becoming Christians. And he says more Jews have turned to become Christians in the last, he said, 50 years than in the previous 1500. So God is doing a great work. Don't be surprised if when we get to heaven we will find many of these Jews who for a long time have lived in ignorance, but they understand by simply reading these magnificent portraits like Psalm 22 and Isaiah 53 that in fact these are beautiful prophecies concerning their own Messiah, the Jesus who was crucified outside Jerusalem's gates. So rejoice with us, pray for the peace of Jerusalem, pray for those who work among the Jews, and thank God for those who are bold and faithful in presenting to them their own Savior, their own Messiah, their own Yeshua for his glory and for their salvation.